Good afternoon, everyone. We hope you are enjoying pre-game. It's the live stream of the Plague Station 4 National Premier League Finals. It's elimination final weekend in South Melbourne of Victoria, taking on Olympia of Tasmania's Victory League. My name's Teo Pelizzeri, joined by Sean Moran in commentary this afternoon. Sean, uh, we're really looking forward to this one. South Melbourne beat the Tasmanian team South Hobart last year, but then went on to crash out against the eventual champion Metro Stars. All the pressure on them today, safe to say. Olympia, great that they've won the Tasmanian League and broken South Hobart's stranglehold on it. And they essentially get a free hit at a much bigger team today. Yeah, very much so, Taro. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be here on a Saturday afternoon at Lakeside Stadium, a, a really fine day. And you see the pitch looking very schmick. They're just watering the grass at the moment. And uh, really good opportunity for Tasmanian football here today, Teo. As you said last year, South Hobart uh, getting bundled out the first stage. It'd be a good chance for Olympia to show that, you know, they're, they're not a Mickey Mouse team and the Federation does have a lot to offer and a lot to give. And from South Melbourne point of view, they're at home. They've really got no excuses and uh, this would be a really good chance for them to, to get to that next stage and, and for, for their sake, try and go on and win this. Um, and yeah. Kickoff is 4 p.m. Stay with us here on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you want us on your handheld device, get Team App. It is free to download from the uh, Apple uh, iTunes Store, or if you've got an Android, you can also get it uh, from Google Play. Team App, search for FFV. It is free to download, and uh, just tick the supporters group, and that way you can take it. Uh, with you anywhere you go. Stay with us here on YouTube, though. Kickoff is 4 p.m., and we will be back with you soon.
Welcome to the PlayStation 4 National Premier League's final series. It is Elimination Final Weekend and Victoria takes on Tasmania. It's South Melbourne against Olympia Warriors, complete with Centurion out on the pitch here at Lakeside Stadium in Melbourne. Good afternoon and welcome to our live coverage. It is at youtube.com forward slash NPL Victoria and available on your mobile devices using FFV Team App. Free to download for iPhone and Android. Make sure you get FFE Team App. Hundreds of clubs are on Team App. Why not find yours and also get the FFV as well. As the Centurion makes his way off the field, let's uh, welcome our commentary team. My name's Teo Pelizzeri. Joined this afternoon by Sean Moran. Sean, great to have you back here at Lakeside Stadium, the scene where South Melbourne were knocked out of last year's NPL finals by the eventual champion at Metro Stars. They would want to make amends today, not just for that, but for the fact that they lost the grand final against the Bentley Greens here in Melbourne last weekend. Yes, good afternoon, Teo. Uh, it's great to be here today. And good afternoon to Dem. Uh, wonderful opportunity, like you said, Teo, for South Melbourne to strike back uh, and to really kickstart the end of their season again. A, a really disappointing way to, to round out their NPL season last week with that defeat to Bentley Greens. But, you know, as they've always said previously, success on the national stage is a, is a massive priority for Chris Taylor and for South Melbourne. And what better opportunity here than to, you know, knock off the Tasmanian team to go one step further this season. The other member of our commentary team today is Adam Baroli. Uh, Adam, you're up here with us in the commentary position to start the day, but we'll have you down at ground level in the second half. Uh, just an update on weather and conditions before we get started. You uh, did a full lap of the Oval uh, here at Lakeside Stadium, the running track before the start of the broadcast this afternoon. And uh, you also had a quick look at the pitch up close. What have you made of the weather and conditions here at Lakeside? Yes, hello, Taylor. It's uh, great to be a part of the call team in what should be an uh, exceptional game today. Yes, the pitch does look pristine, as always, here at uh, Lakeside Stadium. It's uh, carpet-like, and uh, there is a bit of a blustery wind, like usual, uh, going towards the south side of the ground, the Lakeside. So, um, yeah, we can expect that to have a, a little bit of a factor on today's game. But, um, yeah, nonetheless, it's uh, a typical Melbourne day, I think. It, it started off beautiful this morning and uh, it's gone a little bit overcast now. And um, wouldn't be surprised if rain does appear later on, but I don't think so. But, um, yeah, all in all, it should be an entertaining day and hopefully the weather remains the same. Let's run through the teams because there's been late drama this afternoon. Michael Eager, the South Melbourne captain, out injured, replaced in the starting lineup by a striker, David Sturton, and Thomas Lackage, a defender, coming onto the bench. So uh, a disaster we suspect it might have been an Achilles based on uh, the uh, body language and the gestures of the trainer and also the fact he needed crutches to get off the pitch. We'll run through the starting 11s of both sides uh, before kickoff right here. In goal for South Melbourne, number 22, Fraser McLaren, and then Tim. Tim Marler, Michael, uh, Michael Eager is out, of course, replaced by David Sturton. Luke Adams, Nick Epifano, Matthew Theodore, Milos Lujic, Bradley Norton, Chris Irwin, Lee Monopolis, and Stephen Hatsikostas. And the Olympia lineup we'll get to in just a moment because we're about to kick off this match. The referee is Lucien Lavadure, a Victorian who has featured a number of times as a central referee in the A League. And South Melbourne in the blue against Olympia in the white. South Melbourne to attack the left of your screen or the lake end in the first half. And Olympia to attack the right of screen or the city end here at Lakeside Stadium. We're underway in the Olympia lineup in goal, Sean Lewis. And then running through the team, Harry Woolley, Shay Hickey, Luke Isles, Nicholas Mearns, Warren Wadawu. Early challenge and 
Lavadure, the referee, almost reaching for the pocket in the opening seconds. But uh, no card in the end. Gavin Hoy, Emmanuel Securis, Nicholas Meredith, Lachlan Nichols and Jake Van de May. Sean Moran, South have uh, had to make a number of forced changes. The eager injury and also a red card for Iqbal Jawadi last week means that their grand final team has lost two of its biggest pillars. Yeah, we'll have to see how much uh, this Michael Eager absence will uh, affect South Melbourne. We know how much of an inspirational figure he is for this team in terms of leadership and, and also his defensive qualities, but also his ability to go up front and, and, and offer a goal-scoring opportunity. So we'll see you know, how that pans out. But um, David Sturton, a, a good replacement, a curious replacement, I think, today having a more attacking-minded player replace a centre-back, but obviously Chris Taylor signalling there. I think that he's really going for this and he really wants to get on the front foot. And Adam Baroli, Thomas Lakic, was not in the match day squad as a substitute. South Melbourne didn't have a defender on the bench, so lucky he was here. He's been asked to kit up and he may well play an important role if South have any further injuries or, uh, dare I suggest, cards sending offs that force them to interrupt their back line again. Yeah, that's right. Our Sturton come into the side and Irwin was playing on the left wing. He's now gone back to left back and Bradley Norton, the usual left back for South Melbourne, has uh, gone into the, the centre of defence there to re replace Michael Eager. So it will be interesting to see how he shapes up as a centre-back in today's game. And uh, this Hobart Olympia team, we are live and interactive today. You can get in touch with us. Hashtag SMBVOLY and at NPL Victoria on Twitter. Let us know where you're watching from. We've already had some international viewers posting in the comments on YouTube. But send us a tweet. We'd love to give you a shout-out in this NPL Finals series. And Sean Moran, we were at the final last year when it was, of course... Metro Stars of South Australia who didn't just win the overall national championship but they qualified for the FFA Cup and that really is the big prize on offer here. You don't just get to call yourselves the national champions, you automatically go through to the round of 32 of this competition that is taking Australia by storm. Yeah, it's an extra incentive for everyone involved to take this seriously. It's always a risk, you know, at the end of a, a season. You have these tournaments that some teams sort of see it as potentially, you know, a, a way to round out the season and an easy way to round out the season. But, you know, with that big carrot on offer, um, it, it makes sure that, you know, teams are going to take this quite seriously. And uh, I know that Olympia are doing so here. Free kick for Olympia. In at the near post, 1-0. Brilliant free kick into the box coming from Isles. And the Tasmanians have opened the scoring here. South Melbourne stunned. It was a brilliant header coming in from Nichols. And he celebrates in front of his bench. What a moment for Olympia. And they lead here at Lakeside Stadium. Yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic set piece there from Isles and the header coming in there at the front post. South Melbourne caught a little bit off guard. Uh, what a wonderful start for Olympia FC. I was just mentioning before the free kick came through that uh, the Warriors were going to be taking this game seriously and they've certainly done that. A you know, absolutely perfect start for them. So Lachlan Nichols makes it 1-0 in just the fourth minute. And uh, we apologise for the clock on your screen. We actually don't have the scoreboard going here at South Melbourne today either. So I think I've got the only clock in the house, boys. But uh, four minutes the goal, Adam Baroli. That is not the start South Melbourne wanted, given they would have still been perhaps a little bit emotionally down after losing last week's grand final and also losing their captain in the warm-up. Yeah, that was a great header there by Nichols and a great ball in by the uh, Olympia footballer. But um, Fraser McLaren would have been disappointed there to be beaten on his near post. He's uh, come in. He's got a big game, big fill, uh, shoes to fill, uh, replacing Raganovic, who's uh, injured his thigh last week. But, um, yeah, I'm sure he'd be disappointed there getting beaten at his front post, especially in that situation where a goalkeeper should never be beaten at uh, his near post. With that said, Sean, technically it was a very good header from Nichols and the delivery there from Isles, it's, it's no less than you'd ask if you're attacking the near post the way he did. Yeah, definitely. And, and to be able to, you know, try and direct that on target when you, you know, his, his back is to goal to try and flick that on. It's a very difficult thing to do. And, you know, uh, in the lead up to this game, the Olympia coach, Glenn McMeal, um, has been talking about the fact that they're quietly confident. And I guess on the balance of play so far, you can sort of see why they've set up really nicely and it were a really good start for them. Michael Egar's out also. Could that just show how important he is to the South Melbourne uh, back line there? First real chance for uh, Olympia to go forward with the set piece and they've converted. So, um, yeah, it could just be how massive an influence it is here. Sturton goes through. There chance go. for Sturton. The ball's bounced kindly for him and he puts it wide and that was a golden opportunity. Play really did break kindly for him there. And the Centurion down on the sideline. He had his head in his hands. He thought it was 1-1, but not to be. And Sturton fires wide of the target. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a great chance. Sorry, Sean. It was a, a great chance there by Sturton. He was uh, played in through Milos Luic, and we know how much of a presence he can be for South Melbourne. Route 1 football there, and Sturton 1-on-1. You'd uh, 
generally back him nine times out of ten to uh, to score in that situation. Unfortunately for South Melbourne, he hasn't been able to do so, and it's a bit of a let off there for Olympia. Now, when the camera pans to the central position, you'll actually see the gate opening and Michael Eager walking down the uh, the tunnel, which is green astroturf, and he's on crutches. And that isn't just a season ender. We suspect that's going to have some long-term ramifications that make his pre-season all the more difficult for next year. And the Clarendon corner, South Melbourne's support, chanting eager, eager for him, giving him a little bit of support and a little bit of love. For the Tasmanian viewers, uh, they might be familiar with Nick Epifano from his exploits qualifying South Melbourne for the FFA Cup. But uh, the, the word I got from the South Melbourne camp before the start of today's game was, we owe, we owe Victoria one. They really feel as though bowing out of the FFA Cup in this amazing year where all the other NPL Victoria teams have made it through to the quarterfinals, uh, really, they're missing out. And as the, the biggest dog in the yard, as they see it, having won the league here in Victoria, they're the ones who've underperformed. And really, the, the national championship is nothing less, perhaps, than they would have expected to make up for it. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, it's such a good chance for you know the Tasmanians here. As we know, they've, they've done very well throughout the season, winning three of the four you know trophies that are available and you know they've finally broken South Hobart's dominance and you know they're, they're backing themselves here and they've got off to a really good start they will have to be mindful of Milos Lewic again Glenn McNeil saying in the lead up that they're going to put a, a ma major emphasis on on keeping him quiet I'll have to make sure they can do that ball down the forward. right it's going to come into the Ooh. area just out of the reach of the striker and Olympia threatening once again South Melbourne need to wake up when the ball's out wide because they seem to have a couple of wingers that are capable of causing trouble here. And you'd say that fullbacks, for the most part, have been one of South Melbourne's great strengths this season in Brad Norton and Tim Marler. But so far, a bit of rust in the legs, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, you, you, you can see an early goal and you're on the back foot. Um, South Melbourne, like you said, have to dust the cobwebs off here really quickly. Um, it's a little bit surprising to see them start so slowly, Taylor. But, you know, as we've said... Um, throughout this season and throughout previous seasons under Chris Taylor, they're a team that never give up and, you know, 1-0 down, at least they've got the, the goal, um, you know, out of the way and, you know, they've got, you know, a good 85 minutes out to try and get back into this game. And as we know, this NPL final series has only been going for two years. It only had all the member federations present last year and away teams have an unbelievable record in this competition. Here's Norton, right on cue. He's going to hit the left byline and cross it too close to Lewis who collects. Yeah, we've seen now, we mentioned uh, Norton, he's gone into the centre-back position for South Melbourne and Chris Irwin has taken up the left-back position now with Michael Egar's injury. So, yeah, you mentioned earlier on that uh, Olympia have gone forward on the wing a few times so it'll be interesting to see how Irwin can cope as a left-back who's naturally a left-winger. Ball into the corner and it's going to be cleared ever so gently by Norton. And now he gets a second chance to pick out a pass. South Melbourne 1-0 down. And we've only played eight minutes of this first half. Unbelievable start from Olympia of Tasmania. And, Sean, I mentioned the away team record in this competition last year. Metro Stars won all three of their games away from home. They went to Perth, to Melbourne, and then to Sydney, winning all three. South Melbourne won in Tasmania, but then got knocked out the next week. And uh, the defeated finalists, Bonnie Rigg, will stay with play Luic, flicking it into the path of Monopolis. Monopolis crossing into the back post, but no one's home in the clearing header from Vandermey, the captain. Runs through the penalty area. Now Epifano. Can't miss him in the golden boots. Back in again, and now turned behind for a corner. But uh, we also saw Blacktown went to... Sorry, not Blacktown. Uh, Bonnie Rigg went to Canberra and had a win. So away teams, maybe it's the, the team bonding and the unity of being on the road that really seems to get the best out of them. Yeah, it's a curious one, and it might be, uh, you know, something might be able to ask uh, the Olympia coach after the game and see if that is a factor. But um, certainly a curious one, isn't it? Chance for South Melbourne to equalise. First corner of the afternoon's an in-swinger. Oh. And it's... It's volleyed over the back post. Hatsa Costas got up with the initial header and Lujic stayed down and it's gone over the bar. It was a good chance and I actually thought the header from Hastakotsis was going to nestle in the corner but it slid just wide of the target. Yeah, it's a very good chance but it's also another, I guess, warning sign for Olympia that they really have to uh, monitor Milos Lujic. They've spoken about it in the lead up and how important and how much of an emphasis they're placing on, on marking him. Uh, you know, they've gone ahead with a holding two midfielders and, and also a flat four. So they're putting a lot of emphasis on trying to keep tight and they've got to make sure, you know, that he's had two early siders that they really get on top of him because all he needs is one chance and, you know, their, their hard work could be undone pretty quickly. Olympia win themselves a throw to be taken by Isles, whose free kick set up the opening goal of the match and the only goal so far after 10 minutes. Little one-two with Wadawu. Marla comes across and is shouting for a throw and wins it. 
South Melbourne back in possession. And now Olympia win it back. Mearns. Crossfield passes a good one into the path of Hoy. One on one against Irwin. It's Hoy to the top of the area. And poor touch from Mearns. Let himself down there. Perhaps the eyes were lighting up thinking of a long shot. Sturton's going to clear it for South Melbourne. And now breaking down the left. Opportunity. Hits the byline and out for another corner. Well played there. And that was Irwin, I believe. And so now South Melbourne are going to commit some numbers forward. Yeah, that was a great chance there by Mearns. He managed to find himself free with uh, five or so yards of space on the edge of the 18-yard box. And as you mentioned, he seemed to try and spend the ball before he even uh, received it. Um, disappointing there for his sake. And it could have been a real chance to put South on the, the back burner. Another chance for South Melbourne. In swinger again. This one comfortably headed away by Mearns. And it's going to run out for a throw. So the, the formation that we had for South Melbourne before the match, Adam, you mentioned losing Michael Eager, but what about the, the forward uh, setup and the way that they like to build the attack around Milos Lujic, who for the third consecutive year, of course, won the top goal scorer award in the Victorian NPL. Yeah, it's very interesting. As you mentioned earlier, Jawadi's not playing, so that's another one of their key uh, attacking links going forward. So he'll be out of the side. Sturton's on the left. We've got Nick Epifano sort of floating between the middle and the, the right-hand side with also Limanopoulos. So they've uh, got a more or less front four to deal with there, and they, they often intertwine their positions uh, and move around there. So they're, they're quite dangerous as Sturton's going forward now on the left. Theodore over the top to him, and now the cross is deep, and this is Sturton. It was Epifano with the ball in, and that is a clearance high. When the goal went in, decent contingent of travelling Tasmanian fans. A lot of them making their way over for what is, of course, a big occasion for their club. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really good to see in... Again, they were saying in the lead-up that this is probably one of the biggest games in their history and uh, at least in recent times, the, the biggest match. So uh, it's good to see a lot of them make the trip over the Tasman and, and get over here and, you know, for their sake, couldn't have got off to a better start, could it? Very close at the top of the Tasmanian League. A few stragglers at the bottom of the competition, but certainly the, the top of the league was hard fought this season. Another ball into the area over the head of Lujic. And this one will run through the penalty box and out for another goal kick. South Hobart were very good value in the FFA Cup as the sole Tasmanian representative. They were 2 0 up and then went out to Sydney United. And Olympia would love to get that same chance on a national stage. Sturton with a full 360, trying to play it sideways into the path of Monopolis. It's deflected away. And now Isles playing it to Hickey. Nice little 1 2. Although that pass is well wide of Securis and Theodore wins it back. Monopolis. That's Acostas. And that pass, well, was maybe expecting someone like a Brad Norton to be bombing down the left, but that was easy pickings for Woolley. And he just kicks it for territory down into the opposite corner. Fraser McLaren didn't want the back pass, and so South Melbourne will reload and go again. Clock is up and working. We're about to tick over... 13 minutes. We hope you are enjoying the coverage here. YouTube.com forward slash NPL Victoria and also available on your mobile device or tablet on FFV Team App. Sturton. Ran into a 50-50 with Wadawu but did well to keep possession of the ball. And now gets it back through an errant pass and Theodore overzealous puts that one out for a goal kick. So the game is settled in now a little bit. 1-0 to Olympia and if you've just joined us it was Lachlan Nichols in the fourth minute putting his side into the lead. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good for the neutral, isn't it, to get an early goal, break the game open. We've seen a number of games here at Lakeside Stadium this season where um, we've seen some, a couple of dour first halves where it's been nil-nil and been very difficult to see either team sort of turn the screws. But, you know, South Melbourne have to come out now. Olympia have asked a, a very big question of them and um, it's hopefully going to uh, make for a really free-flowing um, first and second half. Well, you say that, Sean, but I suppose Metro Stars have shown that if you're a team that's capable of defending yep. a 1-0 lead, you can really strangle the life out of an opposition. Very much so, and you, you look at the exceptions to that rule uh, where South Melbourne have... Here's Irwin, cutting top of the area, ball takes a deflection, Leach keeps it alive! Ooh. And offside. good backtracking <coughs> save by Lewis, in any case it was offside. The offside there, and it's... South Melbourne have gone forward and then a number of times when they have attacked it's come down their left side and it's uh, very interesting because we know they've had a bit of a reshuffle on that side of the field you'd think they'd go down on their right but um, yeah, they're looking promising so far every time they've gone forward they've created a decent chance so um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that we may see them find the back of the net in this game so it's a matter of uh, whether Olympia can hold on and maybe even get a second goal to really uh, put some pressure on South 
Back to your point there, Tao, about South Melbourne um, and their home record and, and losing. You're exactly right. If you know if they face a team that defend quite, stay with play. Crossfield pass finds Hoy in full flight. Can he find Sakaris? He can't. It's deflected. In fact, no deflection. Out for a goal kick in the end. Yeah, teams that can um, frustrate South and are, uh, you know, compact and, and well-structured have the, you know, the tendency to really get the better of Chris Taylor's side at times. It is the exception of the rule, but it does happen. So, you know, they'll be looking at that Metro Stars example of, of last year and realising that teams can come here and get some joy. Um, and, you know, they don't know, South Melbourne will know too much about Olympia and the Warriors. So, you know, they'll, they'll back themselves here and that's a very, very good start. Long ball, Leach trying to run onto it. Too much juice and collected by the goalkeeper. So Olympia looking reasonably comfortable. You wouldn't say that they'd want to afford South Melbourne as much possession and opportunity as they have as the game wears on. But South Melbourne perhaps timing their run a little bit. Full 120 last week. It was a very warm 26 degree day here for the grand final. And I'm sure the Tasmanians listening would... Uh, perhaps be a bit more sympathetic to how that can catch people by surprise at the end of a long, cold winter. Sturton wins a foul here and boot left in by Hickey. Looks like he's going to show enough sympathy to get himself out of a booking here. But certainly where the, the Queenslanders and, and New South Wales listeners uh, that occasionally tune into our broadcasts, Sean, would have ridiculed the idea <laughs> of a 26-degree day being difficult conditions last week. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I ridiculed it myself. I think, um, yeah, it, it did sort of come out of nowhere, but at the same time, we're, we're hardly dealing with Middle Eastern conditions, too. I think 26 degrees isn't too bad. We, we do live in Australia, after all. So South Melbourne trying to switch play, but Olympia intercept, and now Meredith... Plays it out to right back. Woolley working his way up to the halfway line. And now ball over the top. Oh. Flag up against Sakiris and he drifted offside very early there. Easy call for the female referee of the year in Victoria, Danielle Anderson. She's running the line today. Yeah. Through pass, looking for Lujic. Keeper collects. And of course uh, at last night's gold medal, we also had Patrick Chaplin, uh, our man, here on the broadcast <laughs> He was, uh, for the second year in a row, the FFV Male Referee of the Year. Yeah, they've uh, both done exceptional jobs this season. But um, I've seen a lot of Patrick Chaplin in every game that he's uh, refereed. It's, it tends to go very smooth sailing. So, um, yeah, it's always good for a referee when they go unnoticed too in a game. So, uh, congratulations to both those referees. Now Olympia looking to put a foot on the ball, actually retain some possession here. And maybe start to ask questions of South Melbourne as far as trying to score a second. South at the moment looking not desperate, but certainly like they are struggling to click into gear. That's Acostas. Plays it to Irwin. Weaving through Chris Irwin. Relishing an opportunity to start for the South Melbourne team. Was playing at Box Hill in the NPL 1 last season, the second tier. Woolley. Sakiris can't keep possession under the challenge from Norton. Theodore clips it over the top, headed away. And now, physical battle, Theodore wins the ball back. And Irwin is going to go all the way back to Fraser McLaren, who is the backup goalkeeper for South Melbourne. Nikola Reganovich, we were here last week when he got a corky, which has ruled him out for today. And South Melbourne have had to bring in a, a junior to sit on the bench, Rory Bryan. I certainly think that uh, it'd be a nervous moment for him if he's called upon today because South Melbourne, when the squads came out, actually didn't name a third keeper. They were pretty confident Reganovic would at least be fit enough to sit on the bench. Not the case. He's been replaced this afternoon. He's here at the ground today, but unable to take his part in the team. And it was a, a fairly brutal game on both of South Melbourne's goalkeepers last weekend. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Um, we saw Reganovic go down there and, and McLaren also take a knock there in, in that late in that second half of, of extra time and saw Chris Taylor after the game um, very disenchanted with that fact that he felt as if McLaren was being targeted but fortunately for them and I guess fortunately for Victoria that McLaren's been able to get back and, um, and get his place between the sticks it's a good ball ball through here's a chance now for Olympia Sakiris waiting for support to arrive and it does in the form of Meredith's deflection and goes wide of the target and out for a corner. And Olympia 
starting to look dangerous. They do. They look very dangerous on the break, Tao, and it's something that South will have to monitor very, very closely. You know, they, their transition's very good. Um, their passing's very good, and they're slick, and they get bodies together, and, and they're very well synchronised. So um, we'll have to be very careful here, especially from these set pieces. Um, South Melbourne, after conceding their goal from the last set piece. So here's an opportunity now for Olympia to extend their lead, driven to the back post. McLaren with a double fist away, only as far as Mearns. His shot is charged down by Irwin, but Olympia will retain possession. Flag goes up. Player going for that header was coming back from an offside position. On the YouTube comments, we've had suggestion that uh, Luke Isles is actually going to be coming over here to Victoria next season. Yep. And it is true. South Melbourne have signed the Tasmanian Luke Isles. I think it's a two-year deal. Until the end of the 2017 season. So that's uh, certainly an, an interesting position for him. I'm sure he'd love to be playing in the FFA Cup next season and may not necessarily want to knock South Melbourne out. But uh, I suppose when you're a wannabe professional footballer, when you're semi-professional, you go out and you do the job for the colours that you wear regardless of where you're going in well, the future. That's exactly right and it's a really good opportunity for him to demonstrate to Chris Taylor what he can do and, and get himself really you know, at the forefront of his mind in the, in the lead up to next season. And, and he's got off to a, you know, a, a pretty good start. Um, a yellow card there, Tao. Just waiting on the name of the player who's picked up the booking here. So, free kick South Melbourne. Hats Costas, Epifano. Drifting it into the area and headed behind. Luyic was lurking, but it's a corner now for South Melbourne. They've had a few going in search of an equaliser. And the crowd trying to lift their home team here. Pretty subdued at the moment. You can see from the pictures on your screen that we've got the entire crowd in shot today. Probably about 500 fans in at Lakeside at the moment. Epifano to the back post. Free header. Too far out to do anything significant with it. And easily held by Lewis in the end. Hurls it out. Opportunity for Olympia to build. Woolley. Little one-two. Perhaps getting a little bit more confident on the ball, each of the Olympia players, although this one has gone out for a throw. Irwin gets things restarted. Epifano. Sturton. And now Theodore will switch flanks over to Tim Marler. Monopolis. And losing out, Isles taking the ball off his feet. Little one-two with Wadawu. Crossed into the area, allowed to run, and Sakiris had actually turned his back on the ball. Not that he had a great chance to make a play on it. Well played by Wadawu to win the ball back. Isles again. Getting into some dangerous positions here. Tries his luck on the right foot, and that one is held on the half volley by Fraser McLaren. Yeah, pretty simple save for McLaren, but again, uh, another demonstration of Olympia's ability and... and desire to get forward and you know they're making um, making it difficult for South and you know it's a it's a really good sign from them that you know they're not going to be here uh, to just sit on this one goal lead but they're, they're willing to go ahead and attack and you know full plaudits must go to them there's not many teams come to Lakeside Stadium and do that so um, some very good signs from Glenn McNeil's team here yellow card for Shea Hickey of Olympia so he'll have to be careful don't forget, we are live and interactive. Luyic offside there. We are live and interactive today. Hashtag SMBVOLY on Twitter to get in touch with us or at NPL Victoria. And we're midway through this first half. And Olympia, must be said now on the, the game, balancing out a bit, look good value for their lead. Yeah, they do. They've been uh, very good. Although they've been a little bit shaky at the back, I think, though, uh, Glenn McNeil, as uh, Sean mentioned, would be pretty happy with the way that his uh, side's come out and travelled and, yeah, I think uh, earned their right to uh, be leading here at Lakeside Stadium. Full turn on the ball from Hoy. And now wins a the throw. They've got Sakiris leading the line, but they do attack in numbers. They don't like to commit too many forward to the ball. I think when you've got a 1-0 lead away from home, an opponent that you were considered a rather large underdog up against. It probably makes sense to not get too adventurous, but if they score a second, South Melbourne really look emotionally quite low today. Like, they're not yeah. really at the races. No, well, you know, losing that final was a, a major blow 
for them. Um, we all know that they've wanted to get success on you know, the national stage and you know getting knocked out early in the FFA Cup again was 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 quite pivotal in you know in in that but you know this is a really big chance for them and they've, they've got to bounce back you know losing their captain in the warm-up is you know can be unsettling but you know they've got enough quality and enough talent to bounce back from that terror so you know I'd be very surprised if they weren't able to get back into this game or at least um, put some put some pressure on their opponent to who mind you beat Pasco Vale um, in a pre-season game, Teo, earlier on this year. So, you know, they're, they're good value. And we know that, you know, it took 119 minutes for South Melbourne to, to beat Pasco Vale. So they are definitely not a Mickey Mouse team at all, Olympia. And they're definitely showing it here today. The good quality. High ball out to the left. Header on by Isles. And it runs into touch. South Melbourne throw. Just a reminder that if we do finish level today, 15 minutes each way of extra time and then penalties if required. And there is quite an extensive system of determining who hosts semi-finals week after week or the final in the second week in the NPL finals. We'll go through that in just a moment. See what happens with this South Melbourne attack. Theodore one-on-one -on -one against Wadawu. Does keep it in very well. Can't win a two-on-one. Does get a corner. Good result for him. But, uh, yes, you get points for winning within regulation time. You get points for goals. You lose points for bookings. And whoever has the most points after each week is the host the next weekend. And that was why Metro Stars were away from home all three weeks last year. Ball into the area. Reared up to an extent. Not cleared convincingly. And then luck's a fortune for Lewis because the ball has really just fallen off Sturton's feet back into his hands. And what could have been a potentially hairy moment comes to an end. Yeah, it's a little bit of a reprieve there for Olympia. Um, but, you know, again, it's, uh, it's not a major concern. He's, he's dealt with it in the end, and um, they've regrouped, and you know, South will have to go forward again, try and put some pressure on. Nice shimmy on the ball from Hatsikostas. And then undoes the work by hitting it straight to Mearns. Epifano backtracking, made it look good by wrestling the ball off Hoy. Now out to the left. Sturton swinging it in at the back post. A little bit too much on it, and Lujic unable to get there. Ball goes out for a throw. So, if nothing else, Olympia pinned deep inside their defensive half. Yeah, and a, a, a good idea there from Sturton to get that ball in. We've seen so many times this season um, some crosses from that left-hand side, typically from Norton, that hit Lujic. He's such a danger in that area, isn't he? But on that occasion, just too much on it, and Lujic wasn't there to get, um, get to the ball. But South Melbourne can regroup here and offer another opportunity going forward. Throw in to be taken by Tim Mahler. Hurls it into the area. Luich, header on. Theodore, back to Mahler. Really just trying to win the lottery with an attempt like that. Drifts out, and it's going to be a goal kick. 28 minutes gone, still South Melbourne nil, Olympia 1. Yeah, it's um, disappointing there from Tim Muller to uh, try and put the ball. I think I could see what he was trying to do. There was a, an unmarked man for South Melbourne at the back post there, but the, the connection just let him down now. Now, Sean Lewis, just on that last corner, it didn't look too comfortable for him. But as Sean mentioned, that um, it wasn't too discerning for our Olympian. McNeil would be definitely happy with the way they're going as they streak forward now. Ball on the right. Hoy. Trying to step his way past Irwin and does. It's a great chance here for Olympia. And it's turned in for an own goal. Hoy crafting it from the right byline and it's Olympia 2 South Melbourne nil in the 29th minute he has proven a handful today out on that right flank Gavin Hoy and we'll have a look at the replay to determine whether or not there was a Olympia player getting a touch but I suspect this one might have to go down as an own goal Hoy cut it back and I think that has gone in off Tim Marler for an own goal. Yeah, an, an incredible... Um, well, it's a big blow, isn't it, for South Melbourne here? 2-0 down, and it just goes to show, like you said, Teo, uh, down that left and right-hand side, they've been looking very, very dangerous, and they've pinned South Melbourne quite a few times in that back line. And, you know, they've, they've, they've come here to not only get a 1-0 lead, but they've, they've tried to act on it, and, and, you know, fair play to them. They've come here, and, and now, you know, they, they extend their lead. It's uh, unbelievable. It's a big shock to South Melbourne, I can imagine. 
Well, this is quite a turn up, Adam Baroli, but perhaps we suggested they were good value for one nil. Maybe they're good value for two. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but how much of a, an influence is the out of Michael Eger? You know, he's such the commanding central defender there, and they've had to reshuffle their back line a little bit. Also, both their goals have come down that, that left side where Michael Eger and Bradley Norton usually operate. Norton's come into the central position, and um, mm. yeah, they've gone for a makeshift left back. So, um, yeah, massive for uh, South Melbourne, and interesting to see if or how they can bounce back from this uh, situation that they're in now. Well, it's a monumental task. 2-0, and we suggested that a second might do all sorts of damage to the mindset of South Melbourne and Olympia are up and about. And that shot is held by McLaren. And we can already see Dane Milovanovic warming up on the sidelines. Has missed a lot of the season through injury. Talented youngster. One of the final players to be part of the AIS when they still had a football program. Now Epifano almost almost catching Van der May in possession, but the back pass able to make its way to Lewis, and offside flag is against Sakiris. If you're Olympia in this position, I, I know the temptation is there to sit back on 2-0 on net. They've defended very smartly, though. Yeah, they have, and, and they've looked, you know, quality. And, and I wouldn't see them looking, you know, to, to sort of defend here. I think they'd really want to go for the jugular, and, and they should. They've got South Melbourne on the back foot. They're looking very confident. Uh, and like you said, South are looking very vulnerable. They've, you know, got their central defender that's missing. Um, you know, their defence is, is there for the taking, and you know, they've really got to keep going. And like I assume they will. And we must remember, it is only early days. 29 minutes, the goal. We'll see an own goal for the man in possession right now, Marla. Mm. Monopolis, can he pick out a target? Now that the near post does his job. Isles passes straight to Hatsakostas. Epifano tried the look away pass, didn't work out. And now ball is cleared. Good through ball from Meredith. Looking for Sakiris, but the South Melbourne defence combining on that occasion to take care of it. Sturt, good turn. The opportunity to look up and try and build an attack, and he runs himself into a one on two. Pass lets Olympia down, though. Sturton gets another chance. And allowed to turn once again. And that one, a bit difficult for Epifano. Game has uh, had a bit of the shakes here. Bit of scrappy play all around. Yeah, South look a little bit um, taken aback, I think, by that goal. Uh, some uncharacteristic mislaid passes that are sort of starting to accumulate here. And I think, again, it's a really... Um, it's just indicative of the pressure that has, has been put on them by this Olympia side. Um, and it's forcing them into these errors. And... And as a result, it's taking this, you know, the steam out of out of South and giving, you know, all the impetus to, to Olympia here. And um, yeah, they've they've set up very very well. Bit of frustration in the stands as well from the home contingent. Milos Lewis there as well. Now we're looking at a season where they were hoping to win, well, sweep Victoria for every trophy. They nearly did that. They were hoping to have a good FFA Cup run. Didn't come to fruition, and now hoping to take next year's Doherty Cup out of the equation and qualify for the FFA Cup via winning the NPL playoffs. They find themselves 2-0 down. It's a stunning situation. Epifano plays it to Sturton. Taking on Woolley. Cross is deflected and required a touch from the goalkeeper to put it behind for a corner. Alert there from Lewis. We do have a stream of our own here going on about a 25, 30 second delay, so we'll have a quick look at just how dangerous this one was. We are actually on the side of the ground with all the supporters. So we've got it in a, a mirror image, or a reverse image, I should say to you. And that was a very good opportunity for South Melbourne. It's safe to say that the shot was probably going wide. In it comes, and now Lewis able to read that one well in the air and collect it comfortably. Very comfortable for, for Lewis. And again, these set pieces are not being taken advantage of by South, and they're so good in um, when they get those opportunities. So they really have to take them today. Charging through Irwin, Monopolis, nice touch back to Irwin, hits oh. the woodwork, and it bounced off the back of the goalkeeper. Poofed out for a throw, and very nearly the lifeline for South Melbourne there. Their best attacking move of the day, and it hit smack off the post. Attack still going. Free kick right down near the corner. Great opportunity for Irwin. 
South Melbourne very nearly pegging back one of this two-goal deficit. Yeah, great work by Irwin, as you mentioned. Um, he started the move and also almost finished it. Unfortunately for him, it did hit the post, and uh, Lewis looked beaten there by all means and come off his back. And how often do you see it go back into the goal? But on that occasion, uh, it seems as if uh, luck is on Olympia's side as it deflected out. Two in the wall here, and certainly Milos Lujic is the danger from this sort of situation. Epifano swinging it in. Well played by Wadawu to head it away. Theodore running hard, but Sakiris got there first. Just turned and really hopeful ball straight back to South Melbourne. Hoping to turn the screws. Irwin with a crossfield pass to Epifano. Gets around Woolley, but coming over in support. Vandermeer, no nonsense, and he's tried to blaze that out into the uh, Albert Park Lake, but it falls just short. Big running track, of course, here around the ground. For those of you watching who haven't been here since the NSL days. We'll come back to that in a moment. Foul there against Sturton as the ball came in. But this ground, I, I mention it often for games which have a, a large audience of people from perhaps uh, outside NPL Victoria circles, but it has been redeveloped since it was Bob Jane Stadium. It's the home of Athletics Victoria now, and thus the running track around the ground. And uh, also the big frame behind the goal at the lake end where they have the cage for javelin and discus and all those sort of things. Olympia with a chance now to take possession on the left. Wadawu, Isles, Sakiris, and now Hickey. Only player on the pitch on a booking, but hasn't done really anything questionable since. That pass has gone sailing into touch. It must be said, Taro, South have responded well after the second goal, and you know it's very easy in those situations to sort of you know, throw your hands up, but some good signs from them. Um, and I, I guess they've really got no other choice now. They've got to go for it, and you know I think we'll just have to see how um, instrumental or influential that missed chance will be going forward now the rest of the game. Epifano showing his turn of pace and cuts back once, twice, and oh. through the box, cleared oh. off the line. Monopolis with the chance. Leach was waiting on the goal line. It went past him. Monopolis was at the back post and a good block to turn it behind for a corner. Olympia continue to show some real resolve at the back. Yeah, on first instance, it looked as if uh, Epifano had it for one touch too many there. But uh, on that case, he didn't. He was able to jink past one defender, go back again, and then put a great ball into the uh, across the goals. And unfortunately for South Melbourne, they weren't able to capitalise. And it was a, a great goal line clearance by Olympia. Epifano just hits this one high to the back post. Not sure any of his teammates were really on the same page. Adams keeps it alive. Theodore now flicked on. Monopolis trying to keep the pressure on to Epifano again. And that one's not hit cleanly, but straight to a teammate. It will work. Sakiris is the most advanced man deep in his defensive half and does very well to win a foul and relieve the pressure. Yeah, it's a really good foul to win there, isn't it? Um, just when South had, you know, a, a couple of forays there and, and we're looking quite dangerous going forward, it's good to just release the valve there and they can try and set up and, and try and get back a little bit of this momentum um, that... that Lujic getting forward, but it is two on four. And the numbers went out. Ball turned behind for a corner kick. Yeah, it was just that extra touch there for Mu and that allowed Isles to get in and get that crucial foot in. Um, I think if he released that a little bit earlier, Lujic was getting into a dangerous position. But what's happened now and South have to... For Theodore, Epifano swung to the back post. Adams heads across the face. We apologise just for the brief loss of picture, but we are back with you now. Theodore. And a chance for Epifano turning out of trouble. 
put behind. Epifano is doing some nice things. Is he trying to do too much on his own, or is he actually the only one who is giving them a bit of an attacking spark? Well, he's giving them something different, and he is trying to you know run at defenders as well, as opposed to just whipping in balls, which we've seen um, you know happen so far. So I think he is offering something different. And you know there was that ball he put in previously, which was cleared away off. You know what eventually was cleared away off the goal line. It's he's doing something different. Theodore unmarked. He is a good long shot, but that one's charged down. So Olympia not awake to the initial danger, but scrambling to make up for it. Epifano swings it in again. Lujic, great oh. save. Oh. It's a ripper from Lewis to turn it over the bar. And in any case, the flag was up. So I guess he takes it, gets it taken off him. But wow, that was acrobatic. And Lujic, that really is how he loves to score so many of his goals in the air. Yeah, it was an absolute sensational save there from Lewis. Um, I don't know how Lujic has been... You know, left unmarked there. It was just way too easy, wasn't it? And thankfully for uh, Olympia, the flag went up there. And you know, notwithstanding that, it was a fantastic save from Lewis. And we've just seen the replay on the stream we've got going here at the stage.
to live coverage of the PlayStation 4 National Premier League's final series. It's the elimination final weekend. And at the moment in the battle between Victoria and Tasmania, it's Olympia 2 leading South Melbourne nil. Do not adjust your ears. Do not check your eyes. The scoreboard you see on the screen is correct. The Tasmanians have stunned South Melbourne for a 2-0 lead. My name's Teo Pelizzeri. Welcome to our coverage. We are live on youtube.com forward slash NPL Victoria and also via FFV Team App. Make sure you download Team App. It is free for iPhone and Android. Find it in the App Store or Google Play. Hundreds of Victorian clubs already use Team App, so go and find your club and find the FFV as well. Let's welcome our commentary team back to the box. Sean Moran, Adam Baroli. It's been a, a very disappointing first half from South Melbourne. Very impressive from Olympia. Will it continue in the second half, or can a halftime team talk from Chris Taylor turn this match around for the home side? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you say, Taylor, a lot of Chris Taylor's team talks this season have, you know, have really reinvigorated their side and they've come out a different team in the second half. We've got a couple of substitutes here. Uh, they also may play a role. Um, if they can stay firm defensively and, and not concede a third, you know, they're still in this. But it's a, it's a very uphill challenge in Olympia. Um, I think would be very confident they can hold on to this lead. Adam Baroli, before we get to those subs, thoughts as the second half kicks off? Yes, I think South Melbourne want to come out and completely change the way they played in that first half. Some of the, the disappointing performances that they've shown this season. But um, the substitutions, are uh, Andy Kuchovic has come on for David Sturt. And I believe Timmy Muller has come off for South Melbourne also for... Um, Milano Milovanovic for South Melbourne who will go to central defence. So that is uh, brave from Chris Taylor. We saw that South Melbourne ran out of substitutions last week. They had a goalkeeper injury and they made their other two by the 70th minute and the game went the full 120. And that certainly was one of the reasons why Bentley were able to run over them. Not so much entirely down to that reason, Sean, but it certainly stifled any hopes South Melbourne had of counter-punching once Bentley were well and truly on top. Yeah, it played a major part, and as long as South can, um, you know, keep their 11 on the field, they're, they're still in this. Uh, Milovanovic being brought in there to shore up the defence, which we know was looking very vulnerable in that first half. So I think from that perspective, they might be a little bit more confident of holding on um, and, and not conceding again, but they'll have to, you know, offer a lot more going forward because apart from that, shot that hit the post and uh, there weren't too many problems for Sean Lewis and that back four of Olympia here goes Isles down the left Wadawu cross flick header through the area not a great deal of power on it from Meredith and it runs past Sakiris and out for a goal kick so the South uh, the uh, South Melbourne lineup coming into this second half still McLaren in goals Adams Epifano, Theodore, Luyich, Norton, Irwin, Monopolis, Hatsikostas, and now Milovanovic and Kachoyevic. We'll run through Olympia in just a moment, but we'll wait for this attack to eventuate. Kachoyevic, very good at set pieces. Attacking midfielder. And now, ball on the left. Epifano. Good clearance away. Olympia defence has been organised in this match. With Milanovic coming on now, we've seen uh, Bradley Norton go to his natural left-back position and the uh, Timmy Muller has been replaced by Chris Irwin at right-back. So um, a bit of a reshuffle defensively. We'll see if that can uh, adjust things for South Melbourne and whether Bradley Norton can continue to bomb it bar down on the left as he, as he did throughout the season. For those of you wondering, Michael Eager injured in the warm-up, unable to play in this match, replaced in the squad by... Thomas Lackage, who is sitting on the bench and has a one in three chance of still featuring this afternoon. Let's run through the Olympia lineup. Lewis in goal, Woolley, Hickey, Isles, Mearns, Wadawu, Sakiris, Hoy, Meredith, Nichols, and Vandermey. And certainly that central defensive pairing of Nichols and Vandermey has been very effective so far. Nichols scored the opening goal, a header at the near post after a good delivery in from the left. And then the second goal, a very mazy and well constructed run from Hoy down the right kept his feet under pressure, kept the ball in a number of challenges and then able to force it in for an own goal Epifano gets the ball from a shallow pass, Lujic can't get a solid header on the ball clearance is an up and under, South Melbourne scored from almost that exact situation last week, a clearance that went high in the air and then fell kindly on this occasion it's 
out to the right, and Minopolis can't keep the ball. Olympia with a chance to consolidate. The Tasmanian side, 2-0, just the one player booked. They would actually fancy their chances of potentially being at home next weekend if they can continue on their merry way. Just a reminder that posting in the PS4 NPL finals is based on winning within the 90 or you get fewer points if you win an extra time or on penalties and then of course you get points deducted for cards and you get additional points for scoring goals. Yeah, it'd be a massive boost for the, uh, the football club there in Olympia. A lot of travelling fans to travel down to Tasmania against the opposing side so uh, it would be good for the, the club there but if West Adelaide win next week and they manage to go and uh, host a home final. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with the flights and accommodations, especially with the two AFL preliminary finals being in Western Australia. It could be an expensive weekend for some travelling fans. I can only imagine. Perhaps uh, in scenes reminiscent of the, uh, the W League Grand Final being played in Perth the week before Christmas. Perhaps the logistics. Certainly, I think uh, West Adelaide could do a lot of teams a favour. I don't think too many would want to go to Perth, regardless of the strength of the opponent. Bayswater, of course. And that will be an interesting match. Let's stay focused here at the moment, though. That's Acostas battling to win possession back, but Isles comes through and then gives away a foul. So, in fact, it's, it is an Olympia foul. The referee was just pointing to where he wanted it taken. Lucien Lavadure, today's central referee, only gave the one card in that first half to Shea Hickey. And so far, it, it's been a game without too many contentious moments. We haven't had any penalty shouts or ugly challenges. I wonder if the desperation continues to rise. Will things start to fray around the edges? Securus. Laying it off to the right. Now Hoy. Swings it to the top of the box. Milovanovic able to clear it away. Wadawu. And again, cleared off his feet. Kachoyevic. Monopolis. Now Irwin, roamed up and down that flank as a left back in the first half. Monopolis again gets his ankles tapped and this will be the second yellow card of the afternoon. Meredith goes into the book in the 51st minute. South Melbourne take it quickly. Monopolis again getting his ankles tapped, but this time the ball was taken away as well. Wadawu over the top looking for Sakiris. Ball bouncing into his path, but Adams comes across and is able to take it away. Fair call on the yellow card, Sean Moran? Yeah, I think so. You, uh, you saw Epifano trying to get forward there, and you, know, you could just tell it was just a quick little ankle tap just to try and, I guess, um, nullify that momentum that they were gathering. But um, I think South would be pretty happy with how they've started so far. Um, some unforced errors and, again, some passes that are going astray there from South, from Olympia, that is, that we haven't really seen. Norton. Shout for handball. Perhaps an ambitious one against Van der May. And now, shouts against Epifano for maybe leaving a boot in here on the goalkeeper. And the referee is going to come over and expect. Epifano is not leaving the scene. And now players are being waved away. So the referee can have a one-on-one -on -one with Nick Epifano here. It looks as though there's going to be no booking though. And Lewis is back on his feet. We are live and interactive this afternoon. Don't forget hashtag SMBVOLY on Twitter. And that is a sad sight. Michael Eager has had his left ankle bandaged up now. He's on crutches and he's actually making his way around to the front row of seats in front of us here. So, sad end to the afternoon for the South Melbourne captain. Flick header on. Adams. Into the attacking half and allowed to bounce. Lujic is lurking, but Vandermeer comes through. Left foot through the ball. He's not afraid of a clearance into row Z, is he? No, he isn't, but uh, again, some promising signs for, for South here, Tao. Um, getting a lot more of the ball, and uh, like that first half, Olympia not retaining a lot of the ball and, and keeping it. Now, Just giving South a chance. Maisie run from Irwin. Had his feet taken out from under him. And Hickey's got to be careful here. He is on a yellow. I think the fans know that, but referee Lucien Lavajour not even thinking of reaching for the pocket here, and Hickey... He was quick to leave the scene. Referees now going to go to the pocket. Oh, That's it. Yep. Red card. Game over. And that will change the situation.
He had to be careful. It was a, yep. a clumsy challenge and in a yep. dangerous area as well. And I, I think maybe the referee, Lucien Lavajor, just had to get the bearings and remember that, yes, back in the 22nd minute, he did book Shea Hickey. His afternoon is over. Yeah, it's a good decision. Uh, Labadou has got to be consistent here, and I think, you know, he's he's booked um, players for less so far this game. He booked Meredith for a lot less earlier, so I think he's got to uh, make that decision there, and we'll just see if that uh, proves to be costly for, for Olympia and how costly that could be. 54th minute, and that is the end of the afternoon for Shea Hickey. He is down the tunnel, and the Centurion, the mascot, is heading down the tunnel with him. I wonder... Is that going to change things, or actually, could it, could it mean that Olympia just go all out defence and forget about trying to build on their lead? Here's Kachoyevich with the free kick. It deflects off the wall, does its job. Out to the right, Adams has stayed forward. Playing it back to Werwin. First time cross finds Milovanovic. That was the height of ambition, and he puts that one onto the running track. I, I throw the suggestion out there that while, well, of course, they would rather have 11, this might actually cause Olympia to focus and really sole focus on defending could be the last thing South Melbourne want as they try to find a way to break through. Yeah, you're exactly right there. Sometimes you see when a side is leading and they go ten, uh, down to 10 men that they can actually become a lot more sturdy at the back. They really turn to their focus on defence and really try and nullify everything their opposition does and it could be the case this time for Olympia and we could see them maybe push another number back now that they are down to 10 men so they don't hope to concede that goal but it'll be an interesting time for South Melbourne now maybe that's some of the luck that they needed to turn their form around in this game but then again as I mentioned it could be harder for them to, to create more chances with Olympia dropping back more as they go forward Here now go. Good run. Irwin hits the ball in stride Leach, the most advanced man near post flick header across the face and out for a goal kick a fluid move, a promising sign that that one's ended up with the cameramen and the photographers rather than in the back of the net. That's better from South, isn't it? Um, getting some momentum down the flanks and, and trying to, to push forward. And again, a, a very good ball there. And fortunately for South, Lewis couldn't get enough on that to direct that on target. But again, another warning sign for, for Olympia that they really have to you know, keep their bearings here in order to ensure that you know, they don't let South back into this game. Christian DiMartino is the man in the white kit standing on the sideline waiting to come on. Long, deep cross from Norton and out for a throw. So here comes Christian DiMartino. Be interested to see who's coming off. I assume a tactical shuffle here to account for the red card for Hickey. Still a lot of this game to go. And the man who's making way... Wadawu. Here's the number seven, Warren Wadawu. It's been enterprising down wide, but you'd probably say of the two wingers, Hoy has been the eye-catching one from Olympia this afternoon. With that said, it seems like a, perhaps a sacrifice here in order to steady up the team. Yeah, yeah. that's right, as we saw with the red card situation. But get Waduru was uh, coming up against Timmy Muller in that first half, and I thought Timmy Muller did quite well to nullify his influence. We saw he's a very quick player, but um, it'll be interesting to see. We don't know much about Christian Di Martino and where he will come on and what position he'll go into, but definitely a tactical change, I think due to that, the red card situation now. And even though we were suggesting he might get booked for time-wasting, Warren Wadawu breaking into a jog there has saved himself a yellow card. And of course, these yellow cards are important. They could be the difference between hosting and not hosting next week if Olympia were to win through, although I'd suggest the red card has hurt their cause in that respect. What is it? It's uh, three points for a goal, isn't it? So that's, they've scored two goals. They've got six points. They've uh, And they'd get three more for winning within regulation. It's only two for extra time and one for a penalty shootout. So that's nine. And they've had two yellow cards oh, and the red card. So they drop back around five or six points, I think. So if, if, there, if there's a game that goes to nil all and penalties and there's a booking, a few bookings either way, there go. they'd be looking pretty good. Ball down the left. Isles. Sakira's the only man ahead of the ball. Cross has too much on it. Runs through the penalty area ever so briefly. It's been the story of their second half, Teo. Olympia um, getting a little bit of possession and then losing it straight away. Um, so it looks as if they're, they're more than happy here to, to sit back and absorb what South Melbourne can give them. And I guess, to be fair today, um, they haven't offered too much. So it might actually be something that they're going to continue. And tactically, Wadawu was a winger. Di Martino looks like he's dropped in right next to Mearns as a defensive midfielder. So they're going to have a back four and two screening in front. Mm. That is the product of going down to 10 men. Di Martino gets his first chance at a slide tackle, but it deflects unkindly. South Melbourne retaining possession. Norton keeping the ball in. In front of the South Melbourne bench, 
Chris Taylor seated normally is at the edge of his technical area. At the moment, he's sitting back with the rest of his side, perhaps wondering, perhaps hoping that South Melbourne can find a way in. And there's frustration in the crowd as the initial passes work their way backwards. Out to the right, Irwin. Back to Milovanovic. Now for a long ball. Lujic underneath it. And it sits up for Di Martino. And clearance is good enough. Makes its way to Hoy. And Olympia clear their lines. Adams, 50-50. Had to put a boot in. And Hoy has done very well against a, a much larger man in stature. Keeping his feet. He really does know how to dribble the ball and keep it under pressure from opponents. Very well played by Hoy. And... Gets his team a free kick. Yeah, it's uh, excellently done there by Hoy. It's a massive 30 minutes, though, for South Melbourne. They keep um, praising themselves and saying they're the best team outside the A-League, one of the biggest teams in Australian football. And when they're on the national stage, they, they want to be there. But unfortunately for their sake, when they are competing on the national stage, they haven't been able to achieve much success. So, um, yeah, this 30 minutes is really big for their club, and whether they're uh, kept holding accountable for their, their comments saying that they're the biggest team in Australian football. They have to do it on the national stage. Well, here's Irwin trying to do something about it right now. Running at Nichols. Going central. Going his own way. And held on the half volley. Not a great deal of power behind the shot, but the bounce. And you can see on our coverage that both penalty areas do have rather large ball spots in the six-yard box. Anything can happen off those. And I think viewers of the FFA Cup might remember that the, uh, the freakish bounce for Oakley Cannons, which caused a far north Queensland equaliser a couple of weeks ago. With that said, Lakeside is one of the better venues to play on in Victoria. It's not quite Kingston Heath though, as far as the uh, the pitch. It, it can be a little bit wobbly and a bit shifty underfoot, but for the most part, it is in pretty good nick. Ball into touch and frustration again from the home fans. They've Travelling contingent of Olympia supporters starting to find their voice more and more. Epifano. Theodore. Milovanovic will make it work. And now venturing forward again. Irwin. Cross from deep. It's oh. a great header from Lujic. What power and control to score from that sort of range. Is that Milos Lujic or Oliver Bierhoff I see out there? It's South Melbourne 1. Olympia 2. And there is hope in the 62nd minute. There is hope. Whoever it is, it doesn't matter. It's South Melbourne. Like you said, they're getting back into this game now, and it's really come out of nothing. Um, a, sort of an unsuspecting ball that just came into the area, and Lewis had a lot of work to do there. And um, like a true centre forward, uh, he's got up high, and he's headed the ball, not only on target, but above Sean Lewis. And, and that's a fantastic goal, and really opened this game up now with... You know, uh, with Olympia down to 10, it's, it's anyone's game for the taking. Well, it doesn't need to be 10 versus 11 to score a goal like that, though, Adam Baroli and Milos Lujic. He's scored 30 goals in all competitions this season heading into today. Make that number 31. Thank God for the replay that we've got here. I actually missed the goal at first. I was watching Shea Hickey come back up out of the tunnel, the man who got sent off. But a great ball by Irwin and a great header again. He's on Lujic. again here. Ball through the area. Irwin to Lujic. The combination worked once on that occasion. The Olympia defence able to take care of business. Goals change games, and this one is in a very rapid process of change at the moment. Chris Irwin's had a big say in it. Theodore now on the left, charged down, blocked straight off the boots. And it's gone into touch. Crowd's found their voice. The Centurion here from Olympia. I've given him a number of shout-outs today, but you come in full kit to a game like that, you're going to get mentioned, and I love it. He's actually making his way up the stands. Maybe needs to take a seat, getting nervous. Ball on the right again. Irwin has been integral to everything for South Melbourne. Now Monopolis. Crowd rises. And that header is a good one from Nichols. Out for a throw. You just sense now that South Melbourne will have uh, Olympia on the back foot now. We could see another 15, 20 minutes of Olympia just sitting at the edge of the 18-yard box, or deep inside their box. Theodore, that ball a bit more ambitious over many ahead and running through the penalty area. Olympia have got to keep their cool here, Sean Moran. They've conceded one. South Melbourne have got their tails up. If Olympia can hold firm for the next five minutes, they really will feel as though they can still go on and win the game. Yeah, definitely. We've seen South Melbourne. Um, well, right on cue, Kachoyevich with a volley. That one straight at the goalkeeper, Lewis, who holds. A couple of times this season, if we just have to think back to the Doherty Cup final when um, 
They were 1-0 up, well, they were 1-0 down to Melbourne Knights for a lot of that game. And once they scored that first goal, they went on to, to go ahead and, and score three in quick succession. So they do have a knack of doing that when their tails are up. They are very um, lively and very, you know, attacking and dangerous going forward. So like you said, if, if Olivia can withstand that, um, they'll do themselves every chance of, of holding on. Epifano's ball was almost volleyed into the path of Matthew Theodore. Ball cleared away again. Might uh, run through the remaining available substitutes for both teams in a moment. We've seen two from South, one from Olympia. Header from Norton's cleared. Only as far as Kachovic. And he is charged down, going back in, winning the ball back for his side. Epifano, so dangerous in this sort of situation. Look at the acceleration into oh. the area and turn behind for a corner. And Nichols had to be careful there. He had both arms extended away from the body, able to get it off the chest and out for a corner kick. Yeah, and another corner here, short corner. Taken quickly. Kachoyevich back to Epifano. Drifts it into Ooh. the area. And that header from, again, a long way out, drifting wide of the left post by Adams and out for a goal kick. So South Melbourne still have Jake Barker, Daish, and Rory Bryan, the backup goalkeeper. So we might yet see... Barker Daish today, as well and as also Lackage. Thomas Lackage, who is a defender on the bench if they need him. And for Olympia, Jonathan Griffiths, Jack Callan, Stuart Page, and the backup goalkeeper, Spiros Paradisus. So both teams have options, and I guess there's also the safety net of extra time. If South Melbourne are able to get level, perhaps they can buy themselves another 30 minutes if they can't go on and win it within the regulation. And, of course, Olympia... We'll be hoping down to 10 men that it doesn't come to that. Oh. All of the edge of the box. Great oh, chance. Save. Good save. Weaving his way through there. That's a cost us and very nearly making it 2 2. Well, South Melbourne on the march. And that was a very good save from Lewis. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit too easy now. And, and on that occasion for Hatsa Costas to get through. And it's, it's the exact opposite of what we saw in the high ball. Half. Down to Monopolis oh. and cleared away. Lujic on that occasion, thoughts were of his teammate rather yep. than the target, and it's out for a corner. Yeah, you've got to give Chris Taylor a bit of credit here. He went in with Bradley Norton at centre-back to start off the game. That didn't work. He's bringing on Milanovic, and Norton's gone to left-back, as well as uh, Irwin, and they've really injected some pace in this second half to South Melbourne's attacking. Here comes the corner, near post, cleared away comfortably. Well, it also begs the question of Dem whether he should have actually done that in the first half as well. Um, you know, he, he's made that decision to go with Sturton and it backfired and they conceded two and now they've shored things up and, you know, and now they look like a completely, you know, regalvanized side. Epifano, South Melbourne have thrown numbers forward here. He's got plenty of players to cross to. If he can get across away, hits the byline and puts it into the side netting and ultimately well defended by his future teammate, Isles. And I say future teammate because... Nick Epifano signed a new contract to stay with South Melbourne for another year during the week. He did. He will be here for another year, and I think that will come um, with, you know, a lot of... will be received really well by the South Melbourne fans who have um, had a lot to say, a lot of good things to say about Nick Epifano. He was on trial with Dundee United um, this year. That didn't work out, but they'll be happy to have their boy hang on for another 12 months. Attacking foray here for Olympia. A third goal would make it a very tall task for South Melbourne if they can score now. Here's the opportunity. Meredith... Laying it back, Sakiris. Meredith again. Sakiris leaves it for him. It's floating, oh, and oh. it needs a touch over. And Meredith nearly scoring with initially what looked like a miss hit. Yeah, that was uh, great work by Sakiris and uh, Meredith there. There was only two of them against four South Melbourne players. You would have thought South Melbourne would have defended that a bit better, not allowing the time and space to turn on the 18-yard box. So uh, disappointing there from South Melbourne, but great play from uh, Olympia. Well, if that's how they can attack down a man, then perhaps South Melbourne will need to be just a tad more measured in throwing the numbers forward. That was a great touch from McLaren to put it over the bar. And now the corner comes to nothing. Irwin keeps it moving. Epifano. He's just roaming the attack, Epifano. Doesn't matter which flank or through the middle. He's just venturing everywhere at the moment. Lujic coming from deep. Playing it back to Kachoyevich. He's got to take control of the ball. Keep it on the deck. And now play it to Epifano again. Playing it through, Monopolis blocked away. Fans went up. That was a great chance. Hats cost us now. Back out to the left. Epifano again. Takes his chance and sends it just wide of the top right. We know he loves cutting onto his right foot like that, but that one 
Fins wide of the target. Yeah, Epifano would surely be disappointed with that attempt. And you have to say, Sean Lewis has been exceptional for uh, Olympia, their goalkeeper today. He saved a number of chances. Unfortunately, for his sake, he couldn't do much about Milos Luic's headed goal. That was a, a quite, quite incredible header. But nonetheless, he's been exceptional. One-on-one, -on -one, he saved uh, Hatsikostas earlier on in this half. He's been uh, incredible. and He'll go a long way to being man of the match if uh, Olympia go on to win this game. And you've got to remember that for all the dominance of South Melbourne at the moment, since their goal in the 62nd minute, they are still 2-1 down. And Olympia, oh, that's uh, Coy begging to get himself booked here. And does. Time wasting. It's an easy call for the referee when you do it like that. So in the 69th minute, Hoy gets himself a booking. Ball on the right. Monopolis now. Playing it to Irwin. Jinx in. Theodore. You can see just a bit more of the confidence flowing through all the South Melbourne players. Kachoyevic trying to find a shooting channel. Didn't want to take it on his left. Epifano keeps it in. Attack still alive for South Melbourne, although Lewis here able to come out and pluck it from the sky and hold on to the ball. And I think uh, the same must be said about Olympia here. They need to hold on to the ball. Uh, they've, they've coughed up possession way too many times, Tao, and they've in this, in this previous 25 minutes and they've given South Melbourne every chance to get back into this game. They've really got to try and mimic what they did in the first half and that was to try and um, you know, retain possession and control this game. The, the more ball they have, um, the more they mitigate the chance of South Melbourne getting that equaliser. So the foul allows Olympia to go into their attacking half and at least hold the territorial advantage. Hoy, this time unable to keep it in. He is really good with the ball at his feet, though. Adams. Milovanovic. Irwin with a lot of space. South Melbourne trying to stretch the field against Olympia. None of their substitutes are warming up, so they're going with the 10 on the pitch at the moment to do the job. Monopolis. Irwin now. Isles coming across, puts it behind for a corner. Yet another corner for South Melbourne. They've tried some varieties. They've hit long ones to the back post. They've taken short corners. Now I suspect these are all just going right into the mixer, as they would say. Indeed it does. Milovanovic oh. the target. Goalkeeper can't hold it. Milovanovic leaves it for Epifano. On a tight angle. Oh. Hits the woodwork. Off the bar and out for a throw. And Nick Epifano has scored some spectacular goals this year, and that one might have taken the cake. Yeah, I was just praising uh, Sean Lewis <laughs> He dropped that, and the ball fell to Epifano. He was on a tight angle there. Lewis was out of his goal a little bit, in a bit of no man's land, but um, a great effort by Epifano, and unfortunately for him, I thought that was curling in, to be honest, but it hit the crossbar and uh, just went out for a throw, but a great chance there for South Melbourne not to uh, equalise and go 2-2. Second time they've hit the woodwork today as well. Ball still in the attacking half. Not sure whether that was an attempted clearance or just to win the ball at any means. Lujic looking for the return pass from Norton. Bit of pinball and it's taken away and now Woolley has collapsed off the ball. He's going to stay down in the Olympia penalty area. So he's playing everyone on side at the moment and South Melbourne aren't going to put the ball out. I think the referee's blown the whistle here and the fans are not happy about that and it's going to be treatment now for the injured player, Harry Woolley. And Lucien Lavadure, who's already booked a player for time-wasting today, is probably going to be like a hawk on this as the match ticks down. Yeah, it's probably exactly what Olympia needed, I think, to really try and stem the flow um, which South Melbourne have had in the last what, 25 minutes. They've just been dominating and are on top and, and definitely look like the next team to score. Um, Ebefano, you know, millimetres from taking that lead and, and again, Sean Lewis in the air looking a little bit shaky. Um, I think Glenn McNeil be telling his players, try and retain the ball here. Let's try and you know, get back some of that ascendancy that we had in the first half. They've completely thrown it away in the second half. They look like a very different team and I think that would be a, a major concern for them. And back on his feet, Woolley, that's the good news. And it's going to be a drop ball, and I suspect a bit of politics about who gets possession. South Melbourne will be right to resume attacking as soon as it's taken, I assume. And indeed they do. 
Milovanovic. Looking for the run of Monopolis. Vujic! Oh. Great save. Great save from Lewis. Saving the day again for Olympia. Almost like they'd fallen asleep at the drop ball there and didn't really understand that play had restarted. South Melbourne so close to the equaliser and they will feel as though if they can equalise now with this much time on the clock, they could go on and win it within regular time with that man advantage. Milovanovic drifting this one to the back post for Epifano. Couldn't quite control the ball, but goes back in. Fresh air swipe at it. And Woolley, who's back on his feet, puts it out for a throw. That's Acostas now. Irwin on the overlap. Nice work. Putting the ball in. And that one was on the target. Held by Lewis again. South Melbourne, it's wave after wave of attack. You feel like an equaliser is inevitable if things are allowed to continue like this. Yeah, it's, it's got to come to a, a halt soon, I think. And, you know, again, just giving up possession like that. I'm not sure what they're trying to achieve there. Right? Lewis is just kicking it straight to McLaren. Um, it's just inviting more pressure on them here. And um, it hasn't worked so far. And they're very lucky. They've ridden their luck. Olympia, um, they've got a while to go yet. Monopolis tries to turn it in. And it's going out for yet another corner. And I wonder if Olympia will bring on Jonathan Griffiths here. He's still got the bib on, so not while they are defending the corner. We said something needed to change for Olympia. Otherwise, an equaliser seemed inevitable. Maybe a substitution will be it. Here it comes. Lujic, the target, gets some contact on the ball, and it's out for another corner off the shoulder of one of his markers. And so Griffiths still has to wait with the fourth official. Yet another corner for South Melbourne at the city end. This one's high to the back post. Milovanovic puts it into the six-yard box. It hasn't quite gone out yet. Ball's still alive. Adams is up there. Theodore now. And that shot bends wide and high. And now we will see Jonathan Griffiths come in. It's a question of who he's going to be replacing. Some fresh legs here for Olympia, who are very much under the pump here in the 76th minute. And it is going to be the man who was injured a moment ago. And that is the number three, Harry Woolley, the right back, who has played quite well today, Sean Moran, but perhaps with the game heating up, it was starting to get on top of him with Epifano roaming down that flank. Yeah, he did look as if he was being overwhelmed, particularly in this second half, so it's a good injection of fresh legs. They really need to try and shore things up here, Olympia, and hopefully for their sake, Griffiths can aid in that quest. So Woolley comes, on, comes off, and Griffiths comes on. One substitution left for both teams. I wonder if we will go to extra time today. We've got the best part of 15 minutes plus stoppage to sort out whether or not we will. Olympia still in front. Doesn't feel like it. South Melbourne are all over them at the moment. Irwin running down the right. Cutting back, losing possession. Into touch. And that's the first involvement for the substitute Griffiths. Defending that situation. Meredith. Back in for Securis. He's going to drive ball. across field, ball and Hoy. Well, just for a moment, might have thought it was going to sit up for him, but McLaren does well out of his line to take it away. Norton now has Epifano on the left and instead sends it wide to the right. Here goes Monopolis again. Running at the new man in Griffiths. He's going to lay it back. Milovanovic crossing it in. Lujic was offside. I suspect he, he knew. Interesting decision to actually swivel and turn towards a teammate rather than try to fire one on goal. But in any case, the flag is up. Yeah, it's not the first time he's done that. There was a chance, I think, about 10 minutes earlier, Teo, where, um, you know, it was probably stood a better chance of scoring by himself instead of trying to header it back into the centre. It's unselfish, but probably a little bit unnecessary. But again, for Olympia, fortunately for them, it's offside and, and try and regroup. Ball out to the right. Looks like Irwin may have cramped there. He's straight back up, so maybe just a little knock. He's got to run it off quickly because Olympia, if they do score a third now, you'd think it'd be too big an ask for South Melbourne. But Hoy's done well here, won himself a free kick. And he is really very good at being able to draw a foul, Gavin Hoy. And perhaps now he's trying to pull rank on a free kick as well. We haven't had too many set pieces in dangerous positions, I wonder. Well, the first Do Olympia goal, have someone? The first goal come from a set piece, that's all right. 
Um, a, a great a great ball in the box it was by Isles. But um, Jake Barker-Dash warming up now for uh, South Melbourne, so we might see a change for him to come on. He's a midfield player for South Melbourne and formerly played in the A-League as well, so it'll be interesting to see what he could inject into the game if he does come on. So Hoy is going for the big run-up here. Free kick in a central position. Three in the wall. Here it comes. And perhaps was just trying to buy a deflection. Instead, it goes out for a goal kick. So 12 minutes plus stoppage to go here on live coverage of the PlayStation 4 NPL Finals Series. Teo Pelizzeri, Sean Moran and Adam Baroli with you. We hope you're enjoying the coverage. YouTube.com forward slash NPL Victoria. And if you will stay with play, Luic lurking here behind Vandermeer who heads it away. And now out to the right. Monopolis trying to keep possession in a one-on-two. Back to Theodore. And now foul on Kachoyevic, who may well be stepping up to take this free kick. It's edge of the penalty area. And it's perhaps perfect for a left footer, but instead a right footer like Kachoyevic will be looking to swing this one in and find the head of Milos Lijic once again. And Milovanovic and another tall timber, Luke Adams, in there as well. So it's a really good opportunity in a very good position here for South. It's a great chance. A set piece just outside the area on the right. Lewis has been equal to so much that South have thrown at him. But on this occasion, the heart rate starts to rise. In it comes. Good defensive header away. Read it well. And into touch. Out for a throw. South Melbourne trying to hurry it up. Keep the ball in play. Keep Olympia under pressure. Norton is onside. Will swing it in from deep. Another good header away. And now Sakiris can't quite meet the volley. Out to Epifano again. Swinging it in. Good punch coming from Lewis. Got to get back in goal, though. Monopolis, unmarked players galore. Milovanovic, did he have his heels clipped? And the referee does not oblige. Oh, it looks like a guilt-edged chance for South Melbourne, if not a penalty. And yet, Olympia have got away with it. That's Acostas. Now Norton. To the back post. Header into the six-yard area. Oh. Tipped over the bar. So very nearly the equaliser. And Lewis comes up trumps again. It's all action in the penalty area. Yeah, great two minutes there by South Melbourne. I think Lucien Lavadour, though, was right on cue there. He got that decision right. The Olympia player did get the ball. And a great decision there by Lucien Lavadour. And now as a substitution occurs for South Melbourne, we see Jake Barker-Dash come on for their ever-present Chris Irwin. Well, Irwin's run himself into the ground. Had a great afternoon. Now Barker-Dash comes into the game. South Melbourne looking for the equaliser. This one's headed away off the near post by Hoy. They've done everything but score the second. In it comes again. Punched away by Lewis. Top of the box. Great chance. Oh, Norton, it's blocked away once again. Had to shoot it through a lot of traffic. Theodore with the header. And now the defensive header finds its way back to Lewis. Before that action all sparked up, I was saying that if you've only budgeted the time to watch the 90 today, and if we do go to extra time and you want to keep watching, you can get FFV Team app, and that way you'll be able to watch it either on your mobile device or tablet. Free to download and compatible with iPhone and Android, FFV Team app. Barkadesh gets his first touch. Lujic sits up for the pass on the overlap. Monopolis now shooting over the bar. And that one heads out onto the running track. I, I honestly can't believe that South Melbourne didn't score. They had so many chances in that mad scramble just a moment ago. And yet Olympia are finding a way to resist them all. Yeah, I don't know if it's as much Olympia or if it's South Melbourne's inability to finish. Um, I think the, you know something must be said about Sean Lewis and some of the saves he's pulled out. Um, he's been a, little, been a little bit unorthodox. He's been willing to come out and use his feet and whatnot, but um, it's just been... Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to fathom how South Melbourne haven't been able to equalise so far. So we're into the last 10 minutes now. South Melbourne still chasing this game at 2-1 down. High crossfield ball from Milovanovic is going to bounce for Lujic. Heads it into the path now of Norton. Shouts for handball. Referee had a good position. Crowder on their feet pleading. And again, the referee waves the shouts away. Players and fans alike going up, begging for a spot kick. 
These are the sort of desperation stages it's going to be as the game ticks down towards its conclusion. Theodore. Little one-two with Monopolis. Running himself into the corner. Trying to find yet another corner kick. And indeed he does. And now Kachoyevic is going to pull rank and come over to take the corner. Time the enemy. We're into the 84th minute now. Here comes the corner. Kachoyevic sends it near post. Norton oh. with the free header and can't steer it goalward out for a goal kick. Yeah, it's probably one of the, the closest um, chances of the ball. The, the closest they've gone to, to scoring from a, a corner tail there. Corners in particular as well. Their set pieces South Melbourne today have been very underwhelming and they haven't you know, made enough of them. They've had probably 15 to 20 corners, I'd like to think, and they haven't done a thing with them. So, again, that would be something that Chris Taylor is probably going to lament, particularly if they go down here and, and get back into it. We've given Adam Baroli the roving microphone to head down to the sidelines, potentially grab a player from the winning team if Olympia can hold on, or simply to report from ground level if we are to go to extra time. And just a reminder that we will be showing you the match live in full all the way through to its conclusion if penalties and extra time are required. But if you yourself can't stay at your computer, don't forget FFE Team App is how you can take it with you on your mobile device. At the moment, though, we might only have another five minutes of play plus stoppage. Milovanovic looking to launch once again. For those of you who may have joined us late, Olympia are down to 10 men after the red card to Shea Hickey in the 62nd minute. Milovanovic, long cross-field pass. Norton camping himself in the attacking half now. Sending in a ball. Lujic, the chance. Header sits up. Oh. And now Hatsakostas blazing it. Lujic puts his body in the way. And it's gone out for a goal kick. Bit of a pile up there. Let's throw it down to Adam Baroli. The tension is rising in the stands, Adam. What have you made of it so far? Yeah, there is a fair few South Melbourne supporters here and they are very vocal and very upset with the way this uh, second half's panned out. Or oh, sorry, the game as a whole. They are 2-1 down now. And with that uh, handball t decision, they were very vocal. They all thought it was handball. I thought it was handball, but whether it was intentional or not is a different story. So another goal kick and Olympia taking plenty of time now over all of these set pieces. That one, uh, aimless and out for a throw. Yeah, it's again, it's, it's worrying um, for Olympia fans and for their coach there how easy they've been willing to just give the ball back to South Melbourne and, and give them, you know, a chance to get back into this. They, they haven't really been tactically adept, I don't think, enough to really try and hold on to this lead. They're really welcoming them, welcoming them every chance. And again, another clearance to nobody. Milovanovic. He's played a lot of long balls, that one. It was loading up for a shot. And well kept there by Lewis to prevent it from going out for a corner after it took a deflection. But another Olympia player down here. I don't think they're going to stop play, though. The goalkeeper is going to punt it out, though, so they have to bring it to a stop so that there can be some treatment. And Well, they're even saying sub here. I must admit, I thought the ball had just deflected off him, and perhaps what we're seeing, Sean, is a, an injury that's been suffered instead. Let's throw it down to... Adam Baroli on the sidelines. Uh, Adam, just a crowd estimate from you today. How many do you think are in the stands here at Lakeside Stadium? Well, this uh, Western stand holds around 4,000 people, and it's not too full. I would, I would say maybe 1,000 people maximum here today. So uh, I, would, I was expecting a bigger crowd, but unfortunately it isn't. But, um, yeah, about 1,000 people here today, and they've, they've seen a very good game of football. And in last week's grand final, we saw Chris Taylor up on the edge of his technical area almost all afternoon. Today, he's been seated. I mean, what have you made of the body language of the South Melbourne manager this afternoon? Yeah, he looks to have his uh, arms crossed, just leaning back. We usually see him up and animated. But yeah, today he's been in the same spot, I think, for a majority of the game. He knows, I think, his side hasn't performed the way he would have liked. And, and um, yeah, there's not much he can do now, just usher in instructions. But he's made all three substitutions. With a few minutes left, he'd be hoping uh, the responsibilities on the boys and they can uh, perform and get that equaliser, maybe push on for a win. Now, Nicholas Meredith is on his feet, although there's been a lot of waving and gesticulating to the bench. And it looks as though they are going to sub him out. I've got a player scrambling to put his shin guards in. So time wound off the clock. It's been effective enough in that sense. 88 minutes now down. And for the moment, if South Melbourne can restart play before the substitution is made, it would be 11 versus 9. 
Just wondering what exactly Meredith is doing here. I believe he's outside the field of play as he's walking his way around. So that's right, South Melbourne are two up at the moment. Wonder if they can capitalise. Cross into the area, oh. Luic, and a bit like after the drop ball about 10 minutes ago, Olympia nearly caught cold. Yeah, and uh, again, fortunately for them, Lewis was aware of that and came out very quickly. Uh, he's looking very sharp. Again, I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to achieve with these long punts um, into no man's land, Toe. Oh, a lot of pressure now on the fourth official as well to keep the home fans happy. Jack Callan is ready to come on for Meredith. Ball into the area. Lujic with a volley. Oh. And that one squeezes wide at the near post with a deflection on the way for yet another corner. And now... I wonder if the sub's going to be called off because Meredith appears to have made a bit of a recovery and is running on to defend this corner. So Jack Callan might have to wait. Here comes the corner. Kachoyevic over it. Swinging it to the near post and headed away by Mint. And it's a good clearance. Theodore. Out for a throw. It's just another corner, isn't it, Taylor? That's just really thrown away and... Haven't been taken advantage of. And with all that said and done, Meredith is going to be the man coming off. And he is replaced by the number 18, Jack Callan. Adam Baroli, how many minutes do you have uh, extra time do you think the fourth official will give? Four, five, more? There have been a number of lengthy stoppages in this second half. Yeah, that's right. Jack Callan makes his way onto the pitch now. I think there will be maybe three or four minutes. There hasn't been too many to go over the top, but I think, yeah, maybe three or four minutes. And... Um, I'm sure Chris Taylor will want more than that, but yeah, three or four minutes for me. And Adam, a, a player who I'm sure would love to be out there, Iqbal Jawadi, is actually standing just on the opposite side of the fence to you, very nervously watching his team trying to stay in the competition. Ball on the right. Kachoyevich. And that is yet another corner. Can they make it work? Adam, back down to you for a quick word. Yeah, there's our four minutes of added time to be left for this game. And yeah, Iqbal Jawadi is leaning up over the fence. He's animated and I hope he'd be hoping to be back out there if it wasn't for his red card last week. So four minutes of added time in this one. Four minutes for South Melbourne to try and stay in the NPL finals. In comes the corner. Milovanovic oh. cleared off the line. Oh, and they're shouting that it went over. But Isles has saved the day. And the young man who's coming here to Lakeside next season may well have knocked them out with that unbelievable block. Yep, I think it goes, you know, one metre to the left or right of Oles there and South Melbourne have equalised and, and fortunately for them, somehow it's gone straight to his foot and he's reacted with pure instinct and was able to clear that away. And then it was Adams with the follow-up and he just couldn't direct it on target. I think it, you know, if he just even got a side foot to that ball, that was going right in. But again, another let off. It's just, just hard to believe that Olympia have been able to, to hold out. One minute so of stoppage down, three to go. And the Tasmanians trying to hold on for what would be a famous win. Norton down the left, header away, in a touch. And the Tasmanian fans here that have made the trip, applauding and encouraging their team. Hoy fouled by Norton. And it's going to be an Olympia chance again to wind some time off the clock and prolong the frustration here for South Melbourne. Just another example of Hoy using his body very intelligently there, trying to draw the foul, and he's done that very well. And you know, at the same time, he's managed to, again, take some more time off the clock. High ball into the attacking half, and it's bouncing all the way through to McLaren, who's just going to roll it out. And Milovanovic, who's been more or less the go-to man for driving the ball forward. And South Melbourne have dominated this second half. Does so again. That's a Costas out to the left. Norton's got a move to get to the ball. And Isles comes over with a good slide challenge to put it out for a throw. Epifano brings it back into play. Norton now. Epifano on the overlap. And he's got a yard here. Nick Epifano shooting at the near post. And it's straight at Lewis who holds. Yep. And again, I'm not sure what Epifano's trying to do there. If he's trying to shoot, he's got to put a lot more power behind it. Um, and unfortunately for him, it's gone straight to Lewis, and he's gone down and made a really good save there. He's had to get down very quickly. With probably a few more options at the back post he may have been able to pursue, but he didn't. They live another day. Petrovic trying to flick it on. We've now played two and a half minutes of stoppage time. Just four total. Norton throws it in. Epifano. Norton again. Challenged by Isles. And this time it's an Olympia throw. And again, a chance to tick precious seconds off the clock. If South Melbourne had to save their season here and keep it going for one more week, it would literally be a last-minute equaliser to do it. Hoy now. And Sakiris just pumps it long, and that one bends into touch out for a throw. 
It's not very often you see a team being so defensively minded, Taylor. I think they've got every single person behind the ball in this whole second half. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's astonishing. 40 seconds of stoppage to go. High ball. Lujic over his head. Bouncing kindly. Epifano. What can he conjure up? Now a hat. Oh, the header. Over the bar and out. And with that, some fans are making their way to the exits, Sean Moran, because yeah. with the time wound off the clock, we might get one last chance for an attack. There's 20 seconds of stoppage to go. Well, he had a lot of time there, didn't he, Kohovic? And, and he had no real pressure on him. I guess a lot of the fans would have expected him to at least hit the target there, and it's gone very wide of the mark. And the Olympia chance starts, and a man in an Olympia blazer down on the sidelines along with the... Centurion are leading the charge. Are they about to pull off one of the biggest wins in the club's history here at Lakeside? Stoppage time's Lewich. up. Long ball. Lujic brings it down. Oh. And it's deflected away. Vandermeer with the key touch to take it off his boots. And that might do it. Chance for a throw. We've played the allocated amount of stoppage time. And now the clearance. As far as Milovanovic, that will do it. Olympia win! Olympia going to the next round of the PS4 NPL Finals! It is a famous, famous win for the Tasmanian club as they knock out South Melbourne here at Lakeside. Few saw it coming, fewer would have believed it, but at full time, it's Olympia 2, South Melbourne 1. And it's hard to say they haven't deserved it, Taylor. Yes, uh, the second half was very much one-sided, but say the same about the first half and Olympia were very much on top in that first half and yes they've ridden their luck in the second half but you know they've, they've defended well they've had a, a good goalkeeper to rely on and they did the damage early on and you know they've played this game uh, as an away side extremely intelligently you know they've really taken the stuffing out of South Melbourne in the first half you know and they've made it a, a very difficult task for them to get back into this game and you know full plaudits must go to them this is a, a, you know a major upset I think only um, only the Olympians themselves were the, the confident ones that they could actually get over the line here. And they've come here to Victoria and they've done, you know, a, a, you know, a, a massive job on South Melbourne. And this is just a fantastic feat for, for Tasmanian football. Adam Baroli is down there at ground level. Adam, as soon as you get a player, just hail us down and uh, we'll throw it down to you for a quick word. What a moment. Adam, uh, you're not far away. Let us know who you've got down there. Yes, yeah, so I've got the uh, head coach, Glenn McNeil, with me now, live on FFV Radio. Um, congratulations, Glenn. You come into this game as a bit of an underdog. What was your message going into the game? Uh, well, really to, to be disciplined and, and hold our positions because we knew uh, South Melbourne would have the ball for long periods of time. So uh, it was a disciplined performance and, and, uh, and, and credit to them. You know, a man down for the best part of the second half. Resilience resilience and uh, and just an exceptional performance from a, from a fantastic uh, playing group. What did you make of the first half performance from your guys? You went into the break at 2-0 up. Personally, we thought as a commentary team you were exceptional the way you were able to nullify South Melbourne's attack going forward. Sure. Uh, quick transition going forward was a real key for us. Uh, something we've been working on all week. So that was a real focus. Uh, you know, obviously in the second half with a man down, we ran out of legs there, and it was really it was a uh, it was a battle, uh, a real battle. But uh, certainly in the first half, our transition uh, going forward was very quick. I think it caught them napping. And uh, finally, what was your message at halftime? You went in two 0 and you were able to just only concede the one goal, but lucky enough to go through. What was your message at halftime, and how important was uh, the goalkeeper's performance today? Oh well, Sean was outstanding. He's uh, he's a quality goalkeeper. Uh, he's uh, come to us from the United States. Uh, he's he's obviously looking for a contract at a higher level than than us. But um, but he was uh, certainly outstanding. Best player on the ground by far. Uh, the message at halftime uh, was really uh, to maintain our discipline when South Melbourne had the ball because that was a real focus for us. Well, thank you very much and good luck for the next round, uh, Glenn. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much, Adam Baroli, down there on the sidelines. The rest of the Olympia players have made their way down the tunnel. Uh, some unsavoury scenes here, unfortunately. Sean Moran at the end as the, as the referee is headed off. I thought Lucy and Lavadour did a pretty good job today, and, and I'm sure many people watching the stream would have agreed. Home fans felt differently. It's, well, it's part of football uh, that we're trying to stamp out, I, I guess. But uh, yeah. 
Well, I'll, I'll get your final thoughts. Adam, before you disappear down the tunnel as well, I might get your final thoughts as well before we uh, wish our audience good afternoon. You've been out there witnessing firsthand the scenes among the players. How would you describe the celebrations for the Tasmanian side? Oh, they were jubilant. As soon as the final whistle went, went there by Lucy and Lavadule, they were up in arms, excited. They were all hugging, running onto the pitch, and uh, especially their coach, Glenn McNeil, he just ran straight up to his players. He was ecstatic after that performance. And, um, yeah, the president was out here as well. He was uh, jubilant. For the South Melbourne fans, they were, were very disappointed with the way their, their team performed, but now they're, they're just clapping off the last members to go down the race. But, um, yeah, Chris Taylor looked very upset after the performance. But all in all, a great performance there by Olympia. They were a deserved winners, and uh, congratulations to them. I'm sure they've done Tasmanian football proud. Adam Baroli, thank you very much for your work this afternoon. Sean Moran, I'll give you the final word uh, to wrap up the, what was Olympia 2, South Melbourne 1. And not only wrap up this game, but wrap up South Melbourne season 2. You know, they've won probably majority of their matches this season, but, you know, how do you sum that up? Bittersweet. Um, you know, they've been knocked out of the FFA Cup. They've been knocked out here at the first hurdle and didn't go on to win the grand final. So I think as much as the fact that they've had a lot of success, I think th this will leave a very sour taste in their mouth um, and will be, you know, very problematic for them and, and will go down as a, a pretty disappointing season in the end, which for the most part was quite successful. Um, for Olympia, you know, you know, must be very happy. Their fans must be delighted. They've come here. They've done the job on, you know, one of Australia's biggest clubs and, you know, they must be absolutely delighted and, and they'll back themselves going forward that they can go ahead and, and represent Tasmanian football and, and do it very well. Well, Sean Moran, thank you for your observations on today's match. Uh, Olympia progress in the PS4 NPL final series. Victoria's participation is over, and it means that our participation may be over. I'll see if we can get our, ourselves the gig for the final again, uh, like we did last year, but it uh, probably depends where and when it's being played. But we'd like to wish all the best uh, to all the other member federations who are competing for the PS4 NPL Finals Series uh, Championship and that automatic qualifying spot for next season's FFA Cup. In the meantime, though, uh, make sure you jump on to Facebook and check out Football Vic and also NPL Victoria and at NPL Victoria and at Football Vic on Twitter for plenty more about the game in this state. On behalf of the broadcast crew, Red Onion Creative, uh, and also our two co-commentators today, Adam Baroli and Sean Moran, my name's Teo Pelizzeri. Thank you very much for joining us on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel. Until next time, it's goodbye. Your full-time score, Olympia 2, South Melbourne 1.